Hey, Friday Night Prayer Warriors. Uh, thank you so much for uh, logging on and watching today. And however, again, you use this for personal benefit or for a neighborhood group prayer moment or to share with others or share the link, whatever that might be. Thank you so much uh, for watching. And uh, thank you for uh, the encouragement when I see you to tell me that um, you watch it and uh, to continue um to flow in this and you continue to want it. So thank you so much. I'm going to read to you um, James, the fifth chapter in verse number. Um, uh, let's see. I think it's verse number 13. We'll start off. It says, is any among you suffering? Let him pray. I don't, you know, suffering can be all levels and all dimensions um, and all kinds of pains could be marital suffering, could be physical suffering, emotional suffering, uh, financial suffering, um, just something that's causing you some level of pain or discomfort. And God's answer to suffering, no matter what or where you're suffering, and no matter what and where your pain level is, is to pray. But usually when we are suffering in pain, we don't want to pray. I mean, that's almost the last thing that we want to do. But the answer seems to be that when we are experiencing some level of pain in our lives, frustration, heartache, and suffering, we're to pray. Then he says, is any among you cheerful? Let him sing praise. Another answer or antidote. He says, is any among you sick? Here's another antidote. Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one that is sick. You know, prayer is started off in this verse number 13 and it ends here in the verse number 15 or 16 um, in lieu of sickness. Uh, that we are to pray. So let's just put it this way. Whether you are suffering or whether you are sick, prayer seems to be a good antidote for you and I. From the extreme of pain to the extreme of a disease or illness, let's pray. Prayer works. Do not regress. Do not pull back. Let your prayers be passionate. Let your prayers be faithful. Let your prayers be continuous. Let your prayers be nonstop. And, I'm, I'm, you know, skip eating, but don't skip praying. Skip going to the bathroom, <laughs> but don't skip praying. Skip, skip taking a shower, but don't skip praying. Prayer is the foundation of your life that keeps you from shaking. Uh, prayer is the safety net that keeps you from falling and hurting yourself. Prayer is the rudder that keeps you on course. So let's remain humble. Let's remain dependent and needy and communicating with God and keep our warfare game up through prayer. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus that our answer to many, many problems of suffering and sickness in the world and in society and in others and even in our personal lives is for us to pray, God. And Father, sometimes that's more than a quick lay me down to prayer, sleep prayer. Sometimes that's more than a hit and miss prayer. Father, sometimes that's more than just a memorized prayer. But Father, in the name of Jesus, may we not regress in our, in our, era, in our devotions of prayer, God. Father, our flesh is weak. You said that. In, in Matthew, you said, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Our flesh may fight against prayer. Uh, our flesh may, may um, be so easily distracted and lazy uh, and, and misfocused when it comes to prayer. We need the help of the Holy Spirit um, to keep us in the, in, with effective prayer to keep us dedicated and loyal and committed to prayer, to keep us passionate and enthusiastic about prayer. Lord, teach us to pray. 
Teach us to pray like you prayed. You were not out of the will of God. You were in the will of God. You, you, your prayers were always heard and your prayers were always answered. Your prayers have passion. Jesus, your prayers have power. Your prayers are real and sincere and honest. Help us to pray that way. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just count it an honor to call you Abba and Father and to worship and to glorify and magnify your name. Right now, nothing is more important than spending time with you and carving out this time like therapy, like an appointment, like a date. Father, we just worship you as the King of kings and the Lord of lords that rules and reigns over this universe. You're the only one that has a throne you're the only one that is the true and living God. You're the only one that knees will bow and tongues confess. You're the only one with the plan of redemption. You're the only one that can live within us. You're the only one that can restore, restore repair. You're the only one, Father, that can rebuild a life. Father, we look to you today as the source of our lives, not a resource in our lives. And we just want to honor you and praise you for who you are. Not a distant God, but a close God. Not a far away God, but a right here God. You are Jehovah Shama. Shama means the Lord that is here or the Lord that is there. Father, we thank you today, O Lord for the sweet fellowship that we have with you, that we can commune with God, mortal, human, frail, sinful beings can communicate like, like Adam. The creation of God can fellowship with you and walk in the cool of the evening. Father, that's a mystery to us, God. That's so foreign to us, oh God. Sometimes that could be so abstract, oh God, and so distant in this world, God. But today, oh God, in the name of Jesus, we bring our flesh before you now. We bring our thoughts before you. We bring our cares. We bring our concerns. We bring our temptations. We bring our successes. We bring our prosperity. We bring our toys, our things, we bring everything, our jobs, our homes, our families, our children. We bring everything before you now and we lay it down. We'll not withhold anything from you, O oh God. Work in us, work through us, speak to and touch whatever you want to speak to and touch, O oh God. May we be an open book to you, O oh God. Father, that you have full, full access into every aspect of our lives. We will not restrain you. We will not hinder you. We will not deny you, God. Wherever you want to go, past, present, and future, we invite you into our world and into our lives, oh God, into our successes and into our failures, into things, God, that we hold dear to us and we love, oh God, to things that we despise and things that we hate to our pleasures, to our leisures. Father, we bring you into these secret places of our lives, maybe secret sins, God, unconfessed sins, temptations, God, that we seem to be bent toward God. Places, God, of insecurities in our lives and inadequacies of our lives and low self-esteems of our lives and hurts and pains of our lives, we let you in. We allow you to come in. God, you are more than enough. You are the God that is more than enough. You revealed yourself to Abraham, who was barren and Sarah, his wife, in saying that you would from their loins give them a promised seed, O oh God. And you revealed yourself as El Shaddai, the God that is more than enough. May we recognize that you are more than enough. You are not just enough. You are not barely enough. You are not not enough. 
you are more than enough. More than enough that we need, oh God. More than enough to heal, more than enough to deliver, more than enough to restore, more than enough to heal. We allow Al Shaddai to come into our lives now and heal, deliver, and rebuild, men whole and make new. Father, may we not downgrade you, God. May we not think less than you, O God. May you not become common to us, O God. You are Al Shaddai, the God that rules and reigns, the God that is more than enough, the God that is far above God. We worship you tonight. And may we view that you that way, O oh God. May we see you in who you really are, in the brilliance of who you are, in the brightness of who you are, in the majesty of who you are. You are so wonderful, you are so great and majestic that Moses could not look upon you, O oh God in the vastness and the dimension, God, in the measure and the height and the breadth and the broadness of who you are, God. We can't, we can't, God, we're, we're limited, God. If we looked upon you, we'd die. If we looked upon you, we could not comprehend, oh God. If we looked upon you, we'd, our minds would probably be blown, God. Lord, May we honor you that way. May we appreciate you that way. May we value that way. May we give you worth that way. May we praise you that way. May you have first place in our lives, oh God. Oh Lord, today we lift this world up to you, God in all the events of this world, in all the scheduling of this world, in all the plans and plots of this world, in all the uh, history of this world, oh God, in all the activity of this world, everything is open before your eyes. Everything is heard by your ears, oh God. And may you roam freely upon this planet, oh God, and may there not be any strong man stronghold, demonic, affair or welfare that warfare that could stop your presence god from impeding we pull down every stronghold of the enemy oh god in the name of jesus god we pray that nations are open to the gospel god make it happen make it happen through a ruler god make it happen through a people god Make it happen, O oh God, where people are turning to you, O oh God. And, and, and the people are having the freedom to worship you, O oh God. And leaders are falling on their knees, God, and turning to you, O oh God. People all around this world are turning to you, O oh God. Father, in the midst of so much hopeless and helplessness, darkness and despair, God, may the light of the gospel shine, the good news, Father, we pray in the name of Jesus, God, that the church is strong. God, there's a lot of things that are going on in the body of Christ, O oh God, of fallen preachers, O oh God, things being exposed, O oh God. You said that judgment must first begin in the house of the Lord. Father, we need to be judged so that we can walk in holiness and righteousness. We need to be judged, O oh God, so that the enemy cannot still kill and destroy. We need to be judged so that our rewards are not stolen. We need to be judged, O oh God, so that we are not a mockery or reproach to the world. We need to be judged, O oh God. So judge the pulpit to the pew, O oh God, in everything that is going on. And forgive us of sins, O oh God, that we commit as Christians. Commit, forgive us of sins that, that shepherds and pastors and leaders commit. Forgive us of sins that exist within the body of Christ and the church, O oh God. Father, in the name of Jesus, O oh God, where we conform and we compromise in the ways of this world, O oh God, 
where you lose who you are in our lives, O oh God, and we follow after the way of the world. Where, where, it's, where we'd rather be clever and cover up sin and hide like Adam did, God, than confess our sins. It's the nature of our flesh, O oh God. Adam, the way Adam and Eve deal with sin, God, instead of crying out to you for help, instead of publicly confessing, instead of repenting, God, we want to lean on our own understanding and figure out how to cover it up, O oh God, how to continue to look good and walk in the blessings of God. But you will know all things, O oh God. So we ask you, God, to be long-suffering as you are and to be merciful as you are. A lot of people, God, a lot of people can be hurt, oh God. Father, we pray. We pray for forgiveness. We pray for the innocent, God. Heal them and don't let the enemy, don't let the enemy's plots and plans prevail in the name of Jesus. You said the gates of hell cannot prevail against the church, oh God. Bring wisdom to tough situations, O oh God. Bring wisdom to tough situations, to hard conversations that need to be have in God. Let them be manifest. Let truth, let truth come out. Let truth come out. Let truth, let all error, falsehood, lies, and deceptions, God, be uncovered, O oh God, and be exposed, O oh God. Let the light of truth shine in areas, O oh God, and bring healing. And let us walk in a level of the fear of God, the fear of God, the reverential honor, respect, and love, the fear of God. Heal the body of Christ, God, from the pew to the pulpit, O oh God, in all our disobedience, in all our stubbornness, in all our hardness of heart, in all our rebellion, in all our lawlessness, in all our sins, in all our waywardness, O oh God. Forgive us of excusing, justifying, and rationalizing. We come before you, God. We come before you, God, wanting, wanting to be righteous, wanting to be pure, wanting to be holy. You have your way in us, O oh God. You have your way in us. Mold us and shape us. Turn us every which way but loose, O oh God. You do what you want in us. May we not come telling you what to do. May we not come with our agendas. Oh, Father. We have one life and one life to live. And this is a fleeting world and time is fleeting, God. Make our lives very purposeful. Let our, let our lives have meaning. Let our lives have success, sig significance. Let our lives be fruitful, God. Let our lives be faithful, God. Father, don't let us miss the mark of just existing, going through the motions, surviving. There's a plan for every single one of us, God. May that plan come to pass, God. There's a purpose for every single one of us. Let that purpose come to pass. God, may we recognize how much we can't and how much you can. It's all in you. It's all through you. It's all because of you, oh God. In the name of Jesus, may tonight, God, we rededicate our lives to you. May there be a new level of consecration in our lives. May there be a new level of dedication in our lives. 
Make the first call. Renew that call. When you first, when we first got saved, wherever those first were in our lives, revive them and God give them meaning again and passion again. We'd rededicate everything to you, God. Everything that we are, everything that we have, we lay it all down. It's yours, oh God. We re, 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 we renew our fellowship with you. We rededicate our lives to you, God. We ask you to restore the joy of our salvation, God. We ask you to revive that which is dead and dormant, O oh God. We ask you to restore gifts and talents, passions and vision, O oh God. Do a new work in us tonight, O oh God. Don't let us go another day, God, being outside of your will. Let us not go another day of passivity, lethargic, mediocrity, O oh God. Stubbornness, rebellion, lawlessness, and sin, O oh God. Oh, God, it's not good enough just to say that we are Christians, God, if we are not truly Christ-like. May we hunger for you. May we thirst for you. May we seek after you with all our heart, soul, and might, oh, God. Father, may we be in this world, but, out of, but called out of this world, oh, God. May we live separate lives, holy lives, consecrated lives, different lives. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. We worship you. You are almighty God. You are almighty God. We lay it all down. We lay it all down. We lay it all down. We lay it all down, down O oh God. God, I just ask that you heal us and deliver us and make us strong, God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. May our lives be filled with passion, enthusiasm. May our lives be filled with motivation, oh God. May our lives be filled with integrity. Oh, Father, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Father, we thank you today. Would you redeem? Would you redeem? Would you redeem the things in our lives? Redeem lost time. Redeem lost opportunities, redeem lost chances, redeem lost privileges. Would you redeem the things that Joel says, re redeem God, all the things that the pommel worm and the canker worm and the locusts have restored? Oh Lord, Redeem. Don't let nothing be lost. Don't let nothing be stolen. Don't let nothing be forgotten. Redeem it, God. Give it another chance, O oh God. Put it back into service, O oh God. Use it again. Use us again. Use us again. Redeem it, God. Redeem the destruction. Redeem the devastation. Redeem it, God. Redeem the shame. Redeem the embarrassment, O oh God. Redeem it. Redeem it, God. All things work together for the good to those that love God and are called according to his purpose. Oh, Father, I pray. We pray for new realms of breakthroughs, God. Father, new realms of breakthroughs. 
Father, I thank you for that which is being hindered, for that which is being held up, and for that which is being hampered, that there would be a release, God, a release. Let there be a release, O God, in the name of Jesus, O God. Father, I pray that things come, that things would be restored, O God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we pray by the Spirit of God, we pray by the Spirit of God, we pray by the Spirit of God that you would redeem and that you would restore God and that you would make right, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you're not done, God. Father, you are the final say-so. You have the last word, oh God. We thank you, Lord. We give you honor. We give you glory. I feel this in my spirit. It's Amos 9, and it's verse number 13, and it's from the Message Bible. Yes, indeed, it won't be long now, God decrees. Things are going to happen so fast your head will swim. One thing fast on the heels of the other. You won't be able to keep up. Everything will be happening at once. And everywhere you look, blessings, blessings, like wine pouring off the mountain and hills. And I will make everything right again for my people Israel. They will rebuild the ruined cities. They will plant vineyards and drink good wine. They'll work for their gardens and eat fresh vegetables. And I'll plant them and I'll plant them on their own land. And they'll never again be uprooted from the land I've given them. God, your God, so so. I know that's for the nation of Israel, but the word is prof prophetic and progressive and we could apply it in our lives. And so Lord, I pray, I pray for the God happenings in our lives, oh God, that they would come quif quickly and they would come swiftly, oh God. And I thank you that it would happen so fast, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we won't be able to keep up with these blessings that are happening, oh God, because that which is being held up, God, and that which is being hold up and that which is being hampered, God is about ready to be released, oh God. As we repent before you and live in a place of brokenness, oh God, and are humble, God, and we confess our sins and we turn to you, oh God. This is why things will happen, oh God. We wanna learn the lessons of the past, oh God why things got broken in our lives, why things got stolen in our lives, oh God, why things were unfruitful, why things were famine, why things were barren, oh God. Father, because our hearts grew hard, because we conformed to this world, we took on the ways of this world, oh God. We did not hold to your word, God, as our standard, God. We were disobedient and we were sinners, oh God. And that's why the world is so broken and families are so broken and society is so broken and the economy is so broken and politics is so broken, God. And the financial world is so broken, God. And the medical industry, oh God, with insurances going out of the roof, oh God. And Father, sickness and disease running rampant, oh God. Help us to not grow comfortable. Help us to not tolerate. Help us to not excuse nor justify these things. But to say, God, we don't want it. We don't accept it, oh God. And we know that there's better. And Father, in the name of Jesus, it's through a broken heart and a repentive heart if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn, turn, turn from their wicked ways, turn, 
turn from your wicked ways. If we turn from our wicked ways, oh God, you would heal our land. God, healing is a promise, God, whether that is economic healing, whether that is family healing, society issue healing, relational healing, oh God, emotional healing, God, church healing, God, whatever that might be, healing is promised. If we repent, turn from our wicked ways and cry out to God and seek him and seek him and seek him, not play with him, not part-time him, but seek him with all our heart, God. This is the cry of tonight. This is the cry of tonight. Restore the losses that have taken place. Restore the devastation, the devastation of this world, God, in many people's lives. And forgive us, God, of growing comfortable with it. We're, we're frustrated. We complain about it, God, but, but we're not going to do anything about it because the enemy has stolen our power. He's stolen our ability to believe that we could change the outcome of something, but we can through prayer, through repentance. Things can turn, things can change. If my people, which are called by my name, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic, and it's working. God, I thank you. Thank you for this revelation tonight. Thank you for this revelation tonight, oh God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We worship you as the King of Kings. We worship you as the Lord of Lords. We worship you, O oh God, in all that you are, O oh God. We worship you tonight, O oh God. We worship you, we praise you, God. In James 5, 16, in the Amplified AMPC, confess to, con confess to one another, confess to one another, therefore your faults, your slips, your false steps, your offenses, your sins, and pray for one another that you may be healed, another antidote, and restored to the spiritual tone of your mind and heart. The earnest, heartfelt, continual prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. God, we want to see the tremendous power. We want to see the dynamic working that comes not just through prayer. It comes through a righteous man's prayer. Teach us how to be righteous before you, O oh God, not self-righteous but God righteous. Because we want effective, powerful, tremendous prayer working in our lives, oh God. Thank you for showing us the error of our way. Thank you for loving us tonight to chasten us and to tell us why things are wrong, but give us the answer how things can become right. Show us and thank you for showing us how we've been living comfortably beneath our benefits, O oh God, when we should be truly overcomers in this world and in this life living beneath our righteous benefits as heirs and joint heirs. 
because the enemy, we've allowed the enemy to steal the power and anointing and grace on our lives. But I thank you for restoring it and giving us that revelation, oh God. We worship you tonight. We worship you tonight. Thank you for healing our souls. Thank you for healing our spirits. Thank you, Father, for making us whole. Thank you for making us strong. Thank you for making us right. Thank you for making us orderly. Thank you for putting us in a place, oh God, a place in a position of authority and power in your name because of you. May we become dangerous in the kingdom of darkness, against the kingdom of darkness and dangerous working in the kingdom of light. Dangerous. It may everything start being positioned, lined up right, oh God. Spirit, soul, and body. Placement, placement, placement. Positioning, positioning for the last days. Calling us back, restoring us, healing and delivering us. Nothing is by chance, nothing is, is by accident. Getting ready, getting ready, getting ready for the greatest move that has ever fallen on this planet. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. Thanks for praying with us. God bless you. We'll see you next week.